back from running some errands after church and we did get a lot of work done in the hay bale garden yesterday. Uh, <coughs> yesterday's I did a video where I showed that all of these bales that were in here which were from last year the ones that used to be in the square uh, planter area the tunnel trellis and then the little wall that runs around the back the, the side and the back of the garden were all needed to be pulled out. I had already cut all the bale strings and I needed to haul all of that out of here so that I could put the new bales in place. Well yesterday we made a lot of progress. I was able to haul these three rows of bales out, put all new bales back in. I didn't have to reset any of this. I just moved the panels temporarily, put them back, but all the stakes, um, all the, uh, what do you want to call them, the T-posts all stayed in place and uh, all I did was just put the new bales where the old bales were which saved me a lot of work of resetting up you know this here with the stringer and so forth and you can see the layout of the garden here it's been a good layout for several years now so instead of ripping it all out putting it back in and plowing the bales into the garden I decided to start leaving the posts in place just move the cattle panels temporarily uh, cut the strings and then shovel or hand pull or use a pitchfork to put all of the bale composted nutrient rich bale material into a big pile over here at the corner of the garden. You can see it right there by that pine tree right there, the big old pile right there. At any rate, um, I used to just pull it all out, plow it all in, but then we wasted all that compost material. We put it back into the ground, which is fine, but I wasn't growing in it. So now I've got it piled up over here where I can reuse it. Um, and we've put brand new bales in where the old ones were. We didn't have to reset all these posts and stringers. And you can see our layout. We've got two, a lean-to trellis on either end and then a uh, straight up and down trellis with the wooden stringer on top to keep it from racking back and forth. And we just use the bale strings that we cut off of the bales that we spread on the floor of the garden to keep the weeds from coming up. And for those of you who aren't familiar, you drive a T-post down, the T sticking in, the teeth sticking out. You put a screw on either side of your 2 by 4 use a skill saw or a hand saw to cut you a channel down the 2 by 4 about three quarters of the way up, and then you shove the 2 by 4 and then take a wooden mallet or a hammer and tap it down nice and tight onto the T, and then wrap you a piece of baling wire around these two screws on either side to lock it in place, and that stops your, uh, your uh, trellis from racking back and forth. Gives you something more solid. You can tie things up here, put little screws in it to tie things to. I just put baling wires or baling string. This stuff is made out of nylon or some kind of poly material. It lasts for years and years and years, even in the sunlight. So I just take them off the old the bales that I tear apart to put on the garden floor and just tie them back and forth uh, to make my uh, wires for the uh, plants to grow up on and to tie off to. And then of course we've got these lean-tos that we plant climbing and vining things on like cucumbers and beans and whatnot and uh, they grow right on up there and you pick the vegetables from behind. We've got this row here which is nothing but straight trellis from end to end made out of uh, the same stringer method with two T-posts and then uh, baling uh, string in between. And then of course this is our tomato channel we have uh, the bales going down here with posts on either side right up against the bales and then I'll take these 8 foot sections, I cut a 16 foot cattle panel down into two 8 foot sections. It's just less, less unwieldy that way, easy to just grab it here and here, pick it up and, and, and move it easily. But I'll pick these up to where the bottoms of these are about 6 or 7 inches above the top of the bale. So I've got a good 7 inch high space up here of cattle panel on both sides. The tomatoes grow up, the branches shoot out each side, you can weave the branches back into the cattle panel and or use, uh, uh, I cut up socks into ringlets and we use those to tie the tomatoes back up to and you got plenty of area on these cattle panels to tie your tomatoes up plus seven feet of support so you can grow some really heavy producing tomatoes in one big row. These rows are, are, are nine bales long, so you've got three, three, and three. And uh, same thing with all three of these. I also want you to notice that I've got about a good six to seven feet between the rows. If you're growing uh, summer squash that trails out or any other type of uh, trailing vining thing, having this extra space here, your tomato plants bush out this way, the squash bushes this way, and you end up with you know a narrow strip to walk in here. If you put these bales 
three or four feet apart, you wind up with a very constricted area. I mean, you can do it, but it's a little more convenient. If you got the space, why not? It makes it a lot more convenient if you give yourself about six feet or so. Then over here, you can see we got three of the four square planters. There's one there, one there, one there, and there's one that's going to go in right here. And uh, we got a few piles of material to drag out of here. And then you can see I pulled the bales from around the trellis tunnel. And you can really see down here how nice and dark that soil is from under those bales. That's the composted material that's left behind. And, of course, we've got ourselves a big compost pile there. And I have these bales here this afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and I'm going to pull all of this composted bale material out of here. And I've got to go pick up uh, about 50 more bales to finish this. Uh, this garden, the way I have it set up with this wall that runs from here to here, plus the, the three sets of nine bales there, the four four bale square planters here, and then this trellis tunnel, it takes 10 bales doing a row inside and outside with a cap on either end on both sides. So 20 bales here, 16 bales for these four square planters, another uh, 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 three times nine bales over there, and then I forget how many here. I think I add it all up, it comes close to 84 bales, which seems like a lot, but uh, you know, the thing about it is you put all of these bales in here and there's a lot of effort on the front end, but the weather's nice right now. It's not hot. The bugs aren't out. You can get a lot of work done and you don't have to do it all in a day. I'm going to pick up 25 more bales tomorrow, set up this square planter and the ones inside of here. Then uh, Wednesday, I'll pick up the last 25 or 30 bales and I'll rebuild this wall here. And then all the bales will be in place. I can start the conditioning process. Then I'll start ripping about a half dozen or so bales apart and spreading them on the floor of the garden about three or four inches thick to prevent the weeds from coming up all season long. All I need to do then is run my drip tapes or soaker hoses down the tops of these bales and on tops of these and over here and so forth, set them up on timers, start the conditioning process, and I've got a pretty much carefree garden all summer long that'll keep producing all the way into the late fall until a heavy frost kills the things. So, And even then I can plant uh, late fall and winter vegetables here in the southeast and grow a number of things right on through. So it makes a very productive garden. Now I used to grow from here, 75 feet over that way, all the way down 200 feet that way and across. I used to have a 75 foot by 200 foot garden and now in this space here, which is about, I don't know, about 35 feet by about 50 feet or so, I grow as much in this space here as I grew in all of that space out there at a fraction of the effort, at a fraction of the water, at a fraction of the uh, nutrients. I get much more food with a lot less effort in this much smaller space through hay bale gardening. So uh, you might want to give that some thought when you start thinking in, well, the bales are too expensive or it's too much trouble to set it up. I'm telling you, I've gardened every way there is, and this is the easiest way to do it. So I'll keep you posted. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the rest of these bales from last year into this compost pile. And then we'll be able to use the compost. I'll throw some more fertilizer and some more water on that pile when I get it finished. And all of the external material on these bales that hasn't come composted along with the internal material with the bales it has will all continue to compost down and we'll have that nutrient rich material to use to top dress bales to plant seeds we've already used a pretty good bit of it to fill the centers of these square planters up you see I've got four bales in a daisy chain to make a square and uh, the center is filled up with the composted material from the bales from last year so it saves me from having to go and buy bagged material I've got more than a generous quantity of compost. So that's all for today. I'll keep you posted as we get on to the next project. I'm gonna stop this video here and get back to work.